We recently uh, posted a video, uh, educational video on methylene blue, and we had an incredible response. I want to make sure that anybody that viewed that video, I want to thank them for taking the time to do it. Um, and having watched some other YouTube videos following that, the response to those has been incredible. So there's a lot of interest in this methylene blue. We had a lot of follow-up questions. A lot of those we addressed um, in writing, but there's a few of these follow-up questions that I think it's important that we do with a video so that it's something that you can watch and rewatch. Um, one, of, one of the first follow-up questions, and I thought it was a really interesting question, so I actually had to do a little research about it, was because methylene blue is an antimicrobial, does it affect our gut microbiome? And again, the microbiome is the good bacteria. We want, we want a quality microbiome with a lot of good bacteria. If that's out of balance for review, it's called a dysbiosis. So you have more bad bacteria than good bacteria. So it's a great question. Does methylene blue um, damage the gut microbiome? Um, the research I did, and I found a couple studies. One was actually done on mice um, in Russia in 2020. Um, very, very dose dependent. So they were looking for cognitive improvement, which is one of the things that methylene blue can aid in, um, and actually putting mice into mazes and the improvement in their um, getting through that maze when they were on a certain dose of methylene blue without damaging their microbiome. Now mice are different, um, but it really gives us somewhat of a template to look at. When they did extremely higher doses, they didn't see an improvement in the cognitive function, but they saw a destruction of the microbiome. So my answer to the question of methylene blue damaging the gut microbiome is really dose dependent. So if we're using it in these small doses, which is what we're seeing in, in people that are ingesting it and getting benefit, these are small doses, I don't believe it's gonna affect the microbiome. But I also firmly believe that people should take a probiotic on a daily basis or a couple times a week at the very least. So if there is any potential for the antimicrobial effect of the methylene blue in the GI tract to affect your gut microbiome, because everybody's different, I think we can really balance that out with a good probiotic. So methylene blue effect gut microbiome, very, very dose dependent. I think it's very safe. I don't think there's much damage that's done in the dosages that we're seeing used, but I think taking a good probiotic if you're taking methylene blue would be important. One of the second most frequent asked questions was whether methylene blue could be used in veterinary medicine or in dogs and cats in particular. So again, it's something that I needed to research. I had not heard of anybody using it in veterinary medicine. I called a couple of colleagues of mine that do a lot more methylene blue than we do, so they have a lot more experience. None of them had any experience with it being used in animals. Um, what we did find is we found a little bit of dosing information in dogs used for methemoglobinemia, which is a rare blood disorder. Um, so there is a little bit of literature on that for a specific rare blood disease in dogs, but we did find that it's very much contraindicated in cats. You do not want to use methylene blue in your cat population. So at least we know that. So that's something that's, that's a very, very important piece of information for you. A lot of questions on dosing. What I'm learning is much like our experience with LDN, low-dose naltrexone, which we're gonna address in the future, some of the questions that we're seeing on that, we'll be posting some videos on that as well, but what we're seeing with methylene blue is it can be a very individualized dosing regimen as well. To me, the best way to do it is to start low, um, and this is a byproduct of some of the information that I got at our compounding seminar in Houston in October of 2023, with a couple physicians that use a lot of it, and I'm piggybacking off the information that they were sharing and the case studies that they were presenting on the patients that they were treating with 
methylene blue, and a combination of methylene blue and low dose naltrexone. So very, very individual dose. So what are we seeing it being used for? Um, long COVID is one of the applications, Alzheimer's, dementia, uh, inflammation, those are kind of the primary things. Um, cognitive function is really one of, the, one, of, one of the great opportunities here. And what's the right dose? I believe we need to start low and gradually increase until we see some response. So we're looking at a five milligram dose once a day, uh, maybe a couple weeks. It works pretty fast. So if you don't see an improvement in a short period of time, I think it would be an indication that we would increase the dose. And we would do that by going five milligrams to five milligrams twice a day to five milligrams in the morning, 10 milligrams at night. We would gradually increase that. Some of the dosing information we're seeing is anywhere from 0.5 milligrams per kilogram to two to three milligrams per kilogram. So there's some do dosing by weight um, that's being used. That gets you a little bit higher dose. You get into the you know, maybe 40 to 45, 50 milligram dose a day. And that we may need to get to, but what if we get the benefit at a much lower dose, then we're not exposing ourselves as much to the, the, the methylene blue as we need to to get the benefits. Um, re remember that methylene blue is a hermetic drug. Um, in low doses, it can be very beneficial. In higher doses, it can be toxic. So I, th I think it's important that we try to keep the dose as low as we can to get the benefits that we're looking for. So methylene blue being used for a lot of things, individual dosing. It's why it's so important that we always practice the triad of care with patient, pharmacist, prescriber working together to find your optimum dose. How do LDN, low dose naltrexone, and methylene blue work together? They have different mechanisms of action. So, but, but they treat a lot of the same conditions. So what we see or we think is it's a synergistic approach where LDN helps with inflammation. It's a little bit more of autoimmune support. Um, methylene blue powers the mitochondria. So there's the different mechanisms there, but you can get a very same outcome. So when you put the two together, we can keep that dose lower. We get the power of two and we get maybe better outcomes when we use the two together. Um, our doctors at our seminar again, and I, re I, I believe I said this in the original video, they were using a lot of methylene blue and low dose naltrexone in their patient population. So can they be used together? Absolutely. Do they have to be? Depends. Again, it's a very individualized patient protocol and that's, where, that's why we're here to help you with methylene blue and later we'll, we'll, we'll address some of the low dose naltrexone questions. One of the things we need to talk about is sourcing methylene blue. There's a population of people and some of the questions that we got was that they were already using it, had bought some off the internet. Um, I think we need to talk about that. Be very, very careful of what you're buying and ingesting. There's an industrial dye liquid product available and they're really, they're about 70% pure. There's a lot of contaminants in there because they're not made for ingestion. It's really important, and I mentioned this in the original, in the original video, that we use a United States pharma, pharmacopoeia grade of the methylene blue, which is 100% pure and there's no impurities in it. We mix that with a USP powder um, so that we can completely fill capsules to get accurate dosing. But again, be very careful of what you're buying off the internet. I think methylene blue should only be done under the care of a prescriber who's communicating with myself and our pharmacy staff on what we're using, the dose that we're using, um, the independent testing that we'll be doing to make sure that the dosing of the capsules we're making are completely accurate. So again, I can't sit, stress it enough. Be very careful of what you're buying and ingesting. Using drops, I've gotten some reports from people through this post that they're using drops that they bought and they feel better but long-term use, you're ingesting some toxins that you really don't want. So again, buyer beware. Uh, I just wanna thank everybody again for the views that we saw on our methylene blue post on our YouTube channel. 
after checking today, we're up to 18,000 views. Again, I very much appreciate your attention to it. Keep viewing. We're trying to put a ton of information out there as an education tool. It's something that we're working hard on. And again, we really appreciate your attention to it.